remember when you watched Star Wars for the first time? With the epic action scenes, the endless lightsaber spins, and heroes? Those were moments to saber. <laughs> Too soon. But how do you feel about Star Wars currently? Hey, hey, hey! Welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and today we're going to be discussing the future of Star Wars in 2024. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show! The Star Wars franchise has always received a great reputation, as the films have reached our hearts. With such high popularity, we would get more compelling movies and video games, right? Well, on the movie and game side, the boat Star Wars rode in became rocky. As most of you know, Disney acquired Lucasfilms in 2012 and signed a deal with EA, a company with a previous exclusive license to Star Wars games. It's not true. That's impossible. Disney and EA holding hands is like a love story between Ahsoka and an Ewok. Very concerning when put together. And Disney has not been favorable recently to the public eye, especially after releasing a trailer for Star Wars Acolyte. That movie should be Alder gone. Eh? Eh? Plus, the movie is being directed by someone who is placing more focus on a queer story rather than a Star Wars story. You could say the theme is very forced. My lord, I take that joke back. Now, die. If Disney is producing Star Wars films, I would rather it be by people who are genuinely passionate about the series. But they did Mandalorian right. Rather than what seemed like a sanitized villain story, I want a Star Wars movie that is dark. Maybe even a backstory on characters like Dark Plagueis the Wise. You don't know the power of the dark side. Aside from Disney, EA does not have the best track record with the number of Star Wars games that haven't come into fruition, like Battlefront 3, Star Wars 1313, the new Mandalorian first-person shooter game, and the potential Knights of the Old Republic remake. Then again, scrapping Battlefront 3 is not surprising considering how broken the classic collection was. This is where the fun begins. Yes, the refund. The force is strong with this one. It gives twice the disappointment and twice the space for twice the price. This is coming from a gal who plays more single player games I'm solo, I'm I'm solo. but lived out the good old Battlefront 2 days right before the devs jumped ship. Just like a dad who went to get milk in the store and never came back. EA stated that their intent with their Battlefront collection was to provide the players with a sense of accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. The sense of accomplishment Aspire feels when they receive our $35. For Christmas, I want a functional Battlefront server. A functional Battlefront server? I'm sorry, I didn't quite get that. Jokes aside, my point is that it's not hard to come up with a good idea for a Star Wars game. Yet EA execs push and pull at the strings of their projects that don't even see the light of day. I find their lack of faith disturbing. They even took a downturn with lack of production, layoffs, and stepping away from research. You underestimate my power! If you're intending on releasing a game, go through with it. Give us a single-player Star Wars game that has an optional multiplayer component. Allow us to use lightsabers, the Force, and interact with the intricate world of Star Wars. And boom! We got a Star Wars game! Jedi Fallen and Jedi Survivor are two beloved single-player games that managed to prove EA wrong in terms of single-player games not being profitable. The games had so much detail, lore, constant references and easter eggs, and the use of John Williams' music with the elements from Souls games and God of War was the cherry on top. It didn't feel like Disney was breathing over Respawn's shoulder. <sighs> Could you not? There were different combat stances for lightsabers as you studied your enemy's movesets so you can slay not only the men, but the women and children too! There were meditation points, new force powers to confuse your opponent. 
Great job, Cal. Confusing the opponent with the sex change, dismemberment, and more. Jedi Fallen brings us the story five years after Revenge of the Sith with Ed Sheeran. Cal Kestis, a young Padawan who embarks on a journey to rebuild the Jedi Order. This game blew my expectations away because of how well the story was written, especially in terms of characters. Cal faces trials and tribulations in both games. From a naive Padawan, he transitions into a Jedi Knight who can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Empire. As you unravel his backstory, you realize why Cal is the way he is, why he's so compelling and inspirational. He struggles, he fails, and he feels like he hit rock bottom. But right as he reaches the breaking point, he overcomes the struggle and develops significantly into the Jedi he's meant to be. Aside from Cal, we have Seer, a Jedi who cut herself off from the Force. Marin, one of the Night Sisters from Dathomir who suffers a heavy burden for the Fallen. Grease is the lovable captain of the Mantis, who feels guilt of his past. These characters together gave growth and impact on each other throughout both games. We also have BD-1, our lovable droid companion who's always there for us, especially when we're close to death. <laughs> Nice one, BD. As you can see, Jedi Fallen and Jedi Survivor had everything we loved about Star Wars. The action, the character development, love, and their share of well-written antagonists. The second sister Trilla was captured and dehumanized into becoming an Inquisitor, enabling us to empathize with her. Then we got the legend himself, Darth Vader, who was finally given a health bar in Jedi Survivor. Did you hear the tragedy of the fall of Mandalo? They killed every last one of them, and not just the Mandalorians, <laughs> but the woman Lorians, and the children Lorians too. <laughs> Funny joke. Time for one final lesson. It was a miracle that these two games existed, especially with the amount of rumored shutdown and cancellations for Star Wars games. Although the future of Jedi 3 worries me, after hearing that Stig Asmussen, the game's director, left Respawn, yet here are some theories that I will predict for the third game. If you're concerned about spoilers, don't worry. Skip to this timestamp. Just like a stormtrooper missing target practice, you won't miss anything. <laughs> What I think will happen is that Cal and his crew will build a community on Tanalor. It's bustling with residents, but Cal will fight the Empire and face an additional antagonist. Darth Maul? Maybe Vader again? Maybe the fun will begin at half the price. Cal may struggle with the dark side, but after meeting an important figure, he realizes that he doesn't have to carry the burden of the fight alone. Following Jedi Fallen and Survivor, there was Star Wars Squadron, a game where you fly in spaceships as a rebel or imperial. There's also Vader Immortal, where you serve Darth Vader temporarily. I sense a latent force ability within you. My lord, can I wield your lightsaber? <laughs> And there were other games like Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge from ILM Lab, and lastly, Lego Star Wars. And we even received news over the months on Star Wars Outlaws that was set to release this year. Although there was a rumor of its delay, but if released, it could be the big release of 2024. From what we know, it is single player only, but there are a lot of choices in the game depending on how you interact with the syndicates. People compared the reputation system from Star Wars Outlaws to Rockstar's Bully. If you do good things for one syndicate, it puts you in the bad books for the other syndicate. In this linear story, you play as an outlaw named Kavis, and depending on your actions, the Empire would hunt you down. With your companion Nyx, you are embarking on an adventure in the time the Empire Strikes Back occurred. Based on the details, this game seems promising as a future Star Wars single-player game. The age rating is unknown, although the South Korean board has given this game an age restriction of 19 plus due to simulation of speculative behavior like gambling, but most likely the age restriction will be lower. What do you think of the future of Star Wars? Let me know in the comments below. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts, and subscribe for more updates like this. Thank you for watching, and that's all. We need an army for that. You 
have an answer.